announcements, and from a military point of view, what that means. The old empire is finished. The new paradigm is emerging. At what the announcements made at the um, assembly of the Russian. March 1st. What's that? March 1st. On March 1st, yeah. And basically, the last 45 minutes of Putin's, Putin's speech, he spoke directly to and was speaking to the Europeans with what he was saying and the Americans. This is what we have. This is what was deployed. And all of this stuff is new. All of this stuff is not touchable by any stretch of the imagination because of its technological leap and advantage over everything that is presently out there. Uh, I'm going to quickly just touch on the five new things. And then I'm going to talk about strategically what they all mean, or what it means in general to the picture. They announced a new cruise missile, which is an AI-capable drone with a uh, nuclear power in it. In other words, it can be launched anywhere in the world. It's self-programmed. It has its targets. It's not able to get its first target. It has a list of 12 targets. And it will go through that list until it successfully attacks a target that it's programmed to attack. It can loiter over the point, either the poles, Antarctic or north, and wait. So in other words, we could have totally destroyed the Russians with a first strike capability. But with these drones, these drones, drones head out, and they look for an opportunity to attack weeks or even months later into harbors, into military targets, into cities, wherever. <clears throat> and, and they also have a capability of sensing radar systems, the other detection systems, and they avoid all of those systems. They have a nape of the earth capability. Uh, they have multiple lasers along the length of the, cru the cruise missile, and it constantly sends messages to the ground as to its height. So it can be fly up a river valley right along the water at 10 feet, cut back up to the mount pass right tight, swing around the edge of the peak, drop back down into the, into the so it it's virtually becomes invisible. That's a game changer. That's one. Number two is they, they announced a new ICBM. A hypersonic ICBM that cannot be intercepted. So it's launched into space. It MIRVs. MIRVs is multiple entry, multiple entry, re entry vehicles. And on each one of those ICBMs, it has six independently targeted warheads. But on these warheads, they are also AI. They're maneuverable, and they have another engine. So when they hit the apex of their arc, the cone breaks out, the targets are all picked. They launch downward, and they are accelerating continuously to the target. Nothing that anybody has, Patriots, nothing can intercept that missile once it starts on its way down to its target. So it's going hypersonic. Okay? All of those missiles are, I don't know if this means anything here, they're one megaton. Yeah, so not the, the, the missiles, the, the, um, the, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki are about 20, 20 kiloton. Um, these are one megaton, which is a thousand kilotons each. Those are considered small by Russian standards. They make much bigger ones, but those are considered small by Russian standards. I, I ran the, I have a program on my computer, and I ran on the west coast an attack of a one megatonner on the Victoria area between, centrally de deployed between Seattle Vancouver and um, Victoria. Initial death would be 400,000 in the first instant, with an additional 400,000 deaths in the next day, and an additional 500,000 deaths in the next. That's one in the next two or three days due to, radi due to the radiation cone and the and the fallout. So that just gives you an idea of what you're what you're doing. Okay, we'll move on. I don't want to be scaring everybody here. Um, they they also announced a new torpedo, drone capable, AI capable, nuclear powered, nobody on board, and it carries nuclear torpedoes with it. Nuclear powered submarine, it's a drone AI. And it goes to the deepest trench, Marianas, and it sits and waits. And then it slowly works its way to where it needs to be. And these new, new torpedoes have a huge long range. They stream when they're fired, nothing can intercept them, and they're hyper, they're super fast. Because what they do is they they envelop themselves in a cone of air, so they're actually moving through air in the water. They're not moving through the water. 
So the only part that's pushing, that's in the water, is, is the propulsion system. And it's nuclear as well. So it can, it can work its way, once they've launched these, the sub gets within range, it launches its torpedoes, they work their way into a harbor, wait for the nets to open, wait, they have this capability to get inside the harbor and then detonate. So they're stealth. They're extremely stealthy. They do the same thing that the cruise missile does. They stick close to the floor of the ocean. They hide, they, they'll go under a ship and just move along the same knots that the ship's moving with it as it's, so that it's hidden, that nobody can see it, and then strike its target. They also announced a new fighter. It's known as the T-50 or the Sukhoi 57. They've deployed four of them to Syria. It's changing the battlefield in Syria completely. They have a look down and shoot down capability and an all encompassing AI that sees the whole battlefield, that transmits to everybody on the battlefield that's their, that's their friend, and it tells them where all the foes are. It, it has this multiple role capability that's incredible. It sees the battlefield in real time and informs everybody on the battlefield in real time of what's taking place, where they are, where you are. So there's this interlink back and forth that's happening in real time which is a huge advantage, and it's being used in, um, on the outskirts of Damascus, and they're pounding that pocket to pieces where the ISIS and Al-Qaeda are trapped in the pocket. <coughs> and that's why the West is screaming to let them out, because, because they've cornered them, and they've split the pocket in half now, and they flank them, and they're starting to roll them up, and they're calling for you know, a ceasefire and let the civilians out. So last week, the Russians had a 12-hour period in which they were said, okay, civilians, out. As soon as the civilian convoys started moving, um, ISIS and Al-Qaeda attacked the convoys. They don't want the civilians to leave those areas because then they can scream to the Western democracies, see what's happening, you're killing civilians, you're doing this, you're doing that. Seven years Syria had a war and I never heard the West scream one time about five or six million immigrants or refugees. I never heard them once scream about city after city being bombed flat by Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Not one mention of humanitarian issues. But here we are, we've got terrorist forces, the junkyard dogs of the West down, are gonna put the boots to them and they want, they want a, you know, some time to rearm and uh, you know, redo their bit. So, so anyway, that's, those are the five, sorry, the five weapons. You, any, you all understand the significance of what's happened. What was the there was a paradigm shift that just took place. Well, Putin makes this announcement, um, and in the hours of right after that, an unguarded sort of communications going on, a quote from a guy named Edward Geist, who works for um, the Rand Corporation, and he's an expert on Russia, and he works in conjunction with the military of the US. You know, because you need corporations that have Rus you know, Russian experts that work with your military, right? That's, this is how the world should run. And anyway, he was absolutely in shock. He said, um, this is going to change my glasses here so I can see what I'm looking at. I'm wondering why I can't see. <laughs> um, experts are aghast at the Russian claims of nuclear power missiles with unlimited range. And this guy's guy is a researcher for the Rand Corporation, he specializes in, in Russia, and Western scientists and the Russian experts. Say, you know, he's saying most of them knew nothing about what the Russians were developing and what they were doing. They have clearly kept this secret and have kept us in the dark. He's quoted as saying, I'm still in shock. My guess is they are not bluffing, the Russians don't bluff. And they have flight tested and, and tested all of these platforms by what was announced. So while the most powerful intelligence gathering agencies in the world, FBI, NSA, CIA, and all the rest of the intelligence community have been spending billions of dollars watching their own people, of all the money spent by these agencies, 80% of it goes into looking at their own people in their own country. The other 20%, I think less, goes into actually looking at who's the terrorist and who might cause the problems. You know, doing wiretaps, data gathering, metadata gathering, um, you know, tilting at windmills and looking under rugs for terrorists that don't exist. While they were doing that, the Russians were developing 
these systems. This is your, these are the people that are supposed to work for you and protect you from this type of thing happening and know what's happening. Subsequent to that, there was a memo that came out that said, you know, some people are saying we knew. We, that are at lower levels, they knew what was going on, but obviously they weren't listened to, nor were they were shunted to one side. And if you knew, so that, does that mean you're incompetent and can't do your job? What does it mean? It's even worse if you say you knew, you didn't disclose, and they say they didn't disclose because they want to keep the war machine going. If they, if they start disclosing, Russians have all this, we can't beat them anyway, then why are we spending two, a trillion or have $20 trillion in the last two decades on our war machine and we can't even detect the Russians doing all these secret developments, technologically? So they are culpable, they're complicit, and they're treasonous. And have been treasonous in their jobs and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Clearly, if this can happen, the way it has. That's what's going on. How about Trump? What's that? How about Trump? About well, this is this is not just one president. Yeah. This is president after president after president. You can't pin this one on Trump. And if he knew anything, mm -hmm. then he's culpable and complicit too. Okay. I mean, anybody that knows what's going on and, and that is quiet and this kind of thing is it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they they basically it's an earth. Quick. This is a shift, a paradigm shift. In other words, the first strike capability no longer exists for the Americans. They cannot take down the Russians and win a war. And so we're hoping that out of this, a dialogue, a reasonable, rational dialogue will start to happen between the West and between the Russians and between the USA. And, and this has to happen. Because there's a whole layer of people at the top end, they're, they're like, you know, they're, they're in an echo chamber. They think they've been so, you know, uh, brainwashed into this concept of we're the best, we're number one, we, we can do this, we can do that, and, they, and their arrogance has led them to where we are right now. And so, strategically, Russia has the upper hand right now. And, you know, a lot of people are taking a serious look at how it's changed the whole paradigm of the world. This is part of the new paradigm. Because, you know, you cannot be a bully, you cannot go to the table and say we're going to do this or that militarily or, or you know, we'll nuke you or, you know, which is always this underlying threat if you, you, know, you don't do what you want. And on top of that, we've got Trump now going to meet with the uh, North Korean, you know, Kim Jong-il in May. And I, and, my, and I say hopefully they're both still alive to go do that in May. I'm being a bit of a cynic, but <laughs> um, I hopefully that they, we do get a peace agreement. And we stand down the whole peninsula <coughs> tension in campaigns and stuff, right? Um, I'm going to be doing a, a you know a whole thing on the drone situation, which is another whole level. And at that time, we'll do some powerpoints and show you some stuff of the new weaponry that's out there and everything else. And I really like I, the uh, presentation I'm going to do on drones. It clearly shows how war crimes have been done, how the illegality international against international law and national law. The assassination of people, kill kill Tuesdays, kill this Tuesdays, and and um, mm. you know how it's going on unchecked even under Trump. You know every day those drones are flying. It to the point. Just give me a sec here, but to the point where the, the guys that make the uh, the uh, missiles for these drones cannot keep up. They've had to build another factory and and um, put more put three shifts on just to keep up with the uh, missiles that are being used in the drones. So, you know, um, this is, it, what I'm going to show in that presentation is the war crimes and I'm going to tie it back so that you can see clearly from one group of people to another people within government agencies how they tie together and how it ties back to the Office of the Presidency. In every case, it ties back to the Office of the Presidency. So you're guilty, guilty, guilty of all of these things, by international law, by national law, by your own law, you know, and, and um, you know, a reckoning is coming for a lot of these people. I don't think they realize it. They may have to answer, you know, Robbie first, and then Scott. Sorry, um, I, I read on Putin's announcement that um, these new weapons make the ADM missile system of the United States um, useless. The trillions of dollars that yes. were spent on the ADM missiles. Just to give you an example, um, 
Last year, Russia spent $60 million, $60 billion on the military. The United States spent $800 million just last year. $800 billion. $800 billion. And then they have a contingency fund of another $100 billion, which they dip into every single year and almost spend that to the full max. That's for additional things that you think you may need. You wonder why you've got no education. You wonder why you've got no health care. You wonder why you've got no infrastructure. Well, I can tell you why. You're spending too much on the military. You know? They spend more, the United States spends more in their military than the next 12 countries combined, including Russia and China. They spend more than the next 12 countries combined on the military. What did they get for the dollar? Go ahead, Scott. So do these weapons mean that they can take down these predator, U.S. predator drills? Um, not, these weapons would not be used in that case, no. What it does mean is their, their, um, their technological aspect, they could take down the drones. The, I don't know if you remember the last attack that took place where 27 drones were sent, 17 drones were sent into, into uh, Syria. They, they shot down five, took control of seven, and crashed five with technological digital warfare. The Russians did that. They took control and landed and said, oh, nice drones, have a look at it, thanks. We're in charge of this now, and we own it. That's what the Russians did in Syria. And yeah. so they, they, they haven't tried to do that again. That was a complete screw up when they lost all 17 of those drones at the same time. And it didn't involve the new technology that could have done. It involves a level of technology because it's the anti. Um, uh, not, not, not part of Putin. But Putin didn't announce it. Putin didn't announce many things that they have. Yeah. And they're continuing, they're going to unravel some others, unroll some other stuff out here too including the ability to scramble signals to these drones and various other things and take it. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, there was, it was a mention of laser weapons or particle beam weapons. Is there, do you have any information on that? That, Putin didn't announce that. They're talking about that and both China, China's actually the lead on laser weapons, believe it or not. China has spent a huge amount on particle and laser weapons and railgun technology and stuff like that. All this stuff's gonna start coming out. And you're going to see that because of the arrogance and because of the we're on top, we don't have to do, we're not really paying attention to what's going on, all of a sudden this stuff's going to appear. You know, they're going to be like, where did that come from? Was there somebody else? Robbie? I, I just, going back to my question, the anti-ballistic missile system, um, just to explain uh, exactly what that is and why Putin's new weapons, Russia's new weapons. That's the Patriot, it's an anti-ballistic missile system. Right, but... So it makes those systems? Yeah, they mean nothing. They cannot shoot down any of these missiles with any of their, their what they had was a shield of anti-missile ballistic missile systems in which they thought they could shoot down incoming Russian missiles. And they had the Amer uh, American people involved in this sense of well-being. Oh, we have this, um, they were trying to get Canada to join in and say, you can be part of this umbrella. Doesn't exist. They cannot do that. So we're not they don't protected. Have that we, we are no, we are not protected. Every city in this in North America is exposed. Go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah, just about the anti-ballistic missiles papers that yeah. the Americans have. Um, they have extremely poor track record. As well. So, yeah. just, the most recent test that I heard about, yeah. what, six months or less yeah. ago, um, involved a missile uh, fired off from Hawaii in an attempt to hit that missile with an anti-ballistic missile, yep. and it worked. Yes. It worked. At last, they got one that, 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 worked. that was successful mm -hmm. after many, many... And that's the circumstance in which the, the, the individuals, the, the Navy or whoever, that fired the anti-ballistic missile obviously knew the exact time yes. that the ICBM was going to be off. That's out right. of Hawaii and knew the, the course of right. the missile in advance. During the Iraq war, most people don't know this, for every Scud mis missile launched by the Iraqis into um, uh, enemy territory, they were only able to intercept one with the Patriot missile batteries. For every? For every 10 they launched. 10, come on. They were able to shoot down one that was coming in. So um, That's pretty dismal. That's yeah, that's really very that's dismal. really bad thing. For a Scud. Right? So, I mean, it's an illusionary thing they, they predicted. Even under normal systems, it's it's a very it's like a bullet hitting a bullet. Yeah. You know, if you can imagine that, you know. And what we don't know, of course, is how many Patriot missiles were fired at that scud. Exactly. <laughs> it could have been a series <laughs> yeah. of yeah. missile batteries firing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're, and they're expensive to use. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, it's 
it, this is a this is a, a quantum um, shift, paradigm shift in the balance of power. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter. I've just read four articles in a row that are basically poo-pooing it and saying it doesn't mean anything from the empire. And I'm telling you, they're wrong. It does. <coughs> anybody in the know knows it does. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead, Stu. Uh, an undersecretary of defense has gotten his name now. Said quietly at a testimony for one of the congressional committees on this. He said, Well, we actually knew about this, but it's unfortunate that Putin chose to announce it in this way. There is that other, I, I, I have to look up that particular item because it's quite funny the way the guy says it was really unfortunate way. <laughs> yes, but it's in my view, yeah, Putin, they, was, Putin was not just speaking to the Russian people. Of course, he's yep. speaking to the American generals. See, the funny part is you've got the backers in Romania and coming in Poland and South Korea and the Aleutian Islands and Guam, I think, or, or Guam, I think. Yep. All the way around, and also those uh, Aggies missile factories on the cruisers in the Aegean. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is around. That's in a design to try and hit the Russian missiles on the boost base, not on the coming down base. No, that's right. And also, they can put offensive missiles in those same silos. Putin pointed this out a while ago. David. We could put a 500 kilometer range offensive missile in the small nuclear form. Yeah. And eventually, that'll be a thousand kilometers. And eventually, be 1500 kilometers. And we can go right, take right into the center of Russia. Right. He said, we don't know what they're putting in the... No, we don't know what they're loading in those silos. So. <clears throat> he said, now, what he said is, it doesn't matter what these things do, because they can't touch what we're putting out there. They can't touch these drone submarines. They can't touch these nope. uh, high, high acceleration boosts. What this is, is, is a complete that. expansion on the dead... The dead hand system. Yeah. In other words, what they're what they're what they clearly explained to the Americans is it doesn't matter what you do, you will pay the price. Even if we don't exist anymore, these drones will be out there hunting you. You know, and you know just when you think you're good, boom, you know, one goes off, right? And uh, so it's 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 interesting. So we can finally get rid of the deep state then. Yeah. <laughs> <Some Star Wars. laughs> any anything else? Anybody? Yes, Rob. Yes, uh, little factor involved with that uh, is uh, software failure. Uh, the, 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 all these systems are practically highly automated mm -hmm. with sophisticated software. Yes. Uh, way back when I worked for IBM, we usually released, uh, released a new operating system <coughs> with 800, and new, 800 known failure yet within it. Uh, because he didn't have the time to actually test it and repair it. It was repaired in the field. Right. Uh, this, this, this is a very sophisticated uh, system. Mm -hmm. You're running great danger that something goes wrong. Absolutely. So the, the, the real focus must be to stop that game altogether yeah. today. Uh, and I think this is Putin's message. Absolutely. You do that now. Yeah. Unconditionally. Yes. That is what I think he's saying. That's a very point. That's a very good point. Yes, Mike. Uh, you said that there were three sources of information that that, uh, that sent out this message to the American people that this is not a problem or not serious. I can't quote you now. But yeah, I, I can dig them up for you. It's, uh, Global Mail is running articles like that. I'm talking about mainstream media. Are basically yeah. saying, "Oh, we got we got this under control. We can we can handle this." Right. Now, I, I want to comment on that. Okay. That is very very essential because the the real decision makers, military and otherwise, they have to get their breath back. They've got to keep the people calm in the meantime. Right. They cannot say, "Oh, what was me? We're done." No, they're not going to throw their arms out. No, what we're so, done. No, exactly. I mean, this is a one hundred percent predictable message from, yeah. from people from these sources. Of course, that's what we're going to say. And in, in respect to the, the impact, the psychological, intellectual, whatever, yes. academic impact yeah. of the details of all of these weapons in the military establishment, political establishment, the elite, everything else, yeah. it's going to take many, many weeks or probably months, months. or a year or more. I would say months. Yes. So thin. Yes. Because it is it is such a game changer. I mean, that it could be that that it's gonna it's gonna re, it, 
engender, it's going to result in an entire new generation of thinking about relations between countries. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, yeah. that's not, not Paul's going to touch on this. That's not going to occur in four months. That, no, it doesn't happen overnight. I, yeah. I, 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 just, I just mean that strategically, we, I need to point out to you that this is a game changer. Yeah. That it doesn't matter what they're saying, and like he says, over the next six months to a year, you're going to see that this is a game changer in how yeah. things are done. You know, in terms of how their approach is and what, what they're, how they're doing their politics and their geopolitics and the rest. And I think Paul is going to speak to a lot of these yeah. things. Yeah, they're going to be getting up their designs for building plowshares now. <laughs> yeah, can we, can we have some infrastructure? Maybe let's not go to war guys. Um, yes, Ken. I think uh, China actually gave everyone five years to actually, that's what, that's what I believe from 2013, it's a five year of learning platform. Right. Well, no, then that's not unreasonable actually. But I mean, in the, when this kind of, when you get this kind of a shift, I, it's, like, it's a Sputnik moment if I can yeah. identify this. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you, my aunt was in the United States when Sputnik was launched, and she said that the, it almost bordered on hysteria having this thing going over, beep, 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 beep. the feeling that the people had that how could the Russians have done this and how come we're not, how come we can't, how come we're not doing this and what the heck is going on, right? She was working in New York and, uh, for a lawyer down there and she said, you went on the streets and people were just like, what is this? How can they have, you know, these, these, uh, these dumb Russians, how could they have done anything like this, you know? And the other thing I'd like to point out to that the American space program is run on Russian engines, and even yeah, with right, the, yeah, even yeah. with the embargoes and the um, and the uh, uh, sanctions, they didn't sanction the Russian engines that they used to maintain their their space program. Those are Russian engines, and they're yeah. well, I mean, the, they're RD one eighties. RD one eighties. All the Atlas missiles run on them. All their space launch goes on. I mean, it's that's really something to think about, you know. And now with Russia and China combining their space programs, did you hear this? Made the announcement they're, they're yeah, combining yeah. the space program for the moonshot and for Mars. This is unbelievable. That you're, they're now going to work cooperatively to to do this kind of scientific. Sorry, with China endeavor with China and Russia. Yes. 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 Oh, mm. Yeah. They're going to. Well, a lot of these technical advancements are coming from China because after their economic reform, they had technological breakthroughs in science. Yes. And when they launched a satellite, it's the most accurate clock in space right now. Yes. And it's spying over everyone. Right. And, and they so did it for way less than what everyone else is yeah. doing for right. us, as the, Indian, as the Indian government did. Far superior. I mean, the, they, the Indian government basically did a space launch and space programs with, I mean, to very Mars. little by comparison to what anybody else had, and they were very successful at it. So, I mean, that's something to be learned there, right? I think there might come up here, Paul. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I see Paul looking at the clock. Yes. Where, where could be the conference? Is there any place we can do it ourselves? Um.